What is going on guys? Today we're back playing more survival with Enigmatica 6. I do a nice Dr. Rage impression, don't I? No? Fine. Of course, as usual, this is not intimidation. This is just random footage. But I do a nice impression. Good. Oh, we don't have food. Interesting. It is perfectly fine. We're gonna cook some food. We're going to have honey glazed ham a la Chateau d'If. Don't ask me why, I thought French is going to make it more posh. Uh, we're gonna eat a pig. For some very weird reason, we also need some homegrown rice. Perfect. I forgot how you cook them. Ah, this is fun. As you guys know, I'm an expert in cooking rice, so this should be easy peasy. Oh, I also need some cubby juice. Okay. It's okay, we did manage to find a little bit in a tree trunk, so we should be okay. Thankfully, we always also have fresh berries. Ouch, ouch. And there you go, honey glazed ham. It looks yummy. So now that we have a decent food, let us talk. As you guys already know, this series was supposed to be over, but on this channel we have a few subscribers which were here before Stoneblock, the time that I was only like two digits, 25 people, maximum. One of those people who is still watching the channel by the name of Eden left a comment on an episode of Divine Journey that I miss Enigmatica 6. Eden wants something, darkness shall comply. Anyways, let us get back down to business. How are you today, Cubby? How's life? You feel bored, right? I shall fix it. I personally think that Cubby is growing and instead of treating him like a child, we should start treating him like an adult. So for example, instead of tying him to a pole with a rope, maybe we should give him his room. Of course in the realm of darkness we are not very rich, but at least we can make him a decent sized room. Don't you dare take his side, because basically, this is my bedroom. And there's a cable. Okay, my bad. Well I would say he looks very happy. What's not to like? Although that is not going to fix his boredom, uh, we need to think about that too. For that we are going to use some infrared sensors. Range of 5 is good. Entity threshold is 1. Power 15, good. Basically whenever he leaves his nest, this guy is going to be activated. And I think what we are going to do is that, nope, not like that. Maybe I should dig from here, <laughs> it's safer. Yes, we are going to link the receiver to our entertainment unit. And I'm assuming whenever we put it back here, whenever Cubby leaves his hive, the entertainment system is going to be active. It should be active now. Yes. Because I was also in there. And I am also an entity. So where do we stand? If you guys remember, we had two challenges with Dr. Rage. One of them was concerning generating power using ethylene, which for the moment we're really doing garbage on that because that is our only source of power generation and probably the solar panel. And the other one was generating resources. So far, every single resource that we have, I either mined it manually or we cheated by using a digital miner. But some of you guys in the comments have suggested to me that we go with occultism because that gives you an ore miner genie. And that is actually really neat because it has a durability of 5000 and it gives you a good variety of ores. You even get glowstone and quartz. And even netherite and the occultism ore itself but the chances are garbage. So I have already made one for testing purposes, you put it inside the dimensional mineshaft which does not have a crazy recipe, and every 16 seconds it's going to give you two ores. Our challenge with Dr. Rage has one specification, it has to be two ores every one second. Or maybe one ore every two seconds, I don't really remember, but we go with the best one. So naturally I thought what I'm going to do is that since making the lamp itself is kind of a pain, uh, I thought maybe we should automate it, so I decided to make a base in the end. And we do have a portal to it. Hello. Very cozy. I know. And it's purple. Oh, and by the way, I did not make the house. The house was already here. But I did make the refined storage system. I am not going to bore you by explaining how you can automate an altar using refined storage for two reasons. It's easy peasy. And secondly, it doesn't work for this guy. Why doesn't it work? I will show you. If you look at anything in occultism, it has a tag, the name of the genie or the foliot or whatever you're summoning. And that name basically changes every single time that you want to craft the book because it's going to summon a different genie. And just to show you, this is the name of the genie, right? We have nine of these books. I'm going to close the grid and I'm going to open it again and we're going to search for him one more time. The name has changed. <laughs> so it's not something that you can automate, you have to do it manually and therefore this is redundant. And say whatever you want, I think this is a very stupid mechanic. There is one more reason why you cannot automate the rituals from occultism and that is, if you want to place the book which has to go in last, you literally have to do this one manually. Otherwise it's not going to work. You cannot pipe it in, you cannot use a hopper. 
and it's very slow, so I have to do this nine times. So why did I want to automate it in the first place? That is a very good question. Eventually, this guy is going to run out of durability and it's going to break. Of course, if you enchant it with Unbreaking 5, uh, well, this is the durability that it has consumed, and this is the amount of ores that it has produced, so it's going to take a very, very long time. But as you guys might have already guessed, very long time does not equal indefinitely, and that is not very good. So this is why I thought it's a good idea to have them on auto crafting, auto enchant them using the enchantment applicator from industrial foregoing so that whenever one of them breaks, we can just replace it automatically. In addition to all of my problems, I thought, okay, I'm going to cheat. I'm going to install cyclic, we're going to extract the lamps whenever they're damaged, repair them, and put them back in. The problem is, uh, you cannot extract the lamp. You can extract the ores, not the lamps. So all of that being said, this process has to be done manually. Every once in a while, I have to come, pick up the lamps, repair them, and put them back in. So at the end of the day, what is it that we have to do? We need to do some trading. This is fun. I haven't finished it yet, but it is fun. We need to buy 9 Unbreaking 5 books. And Papa Felix, I have not forgotten you. That is more than 9. Okay, cool. And of course, we're going to waste a lot of experience, well, not that much, to enchant every single one of them. And with nine enchanted miners, we should meet the criteria for Dr. Rage. That should be two ores every one second. Because, you know, each one of them gives you two ores every 16 seconds. That's one ore every eight seconds. We have nine of them. That should be fine. And obviously, whenever we want to repair them, I just have to take them out of their mine shaft, put them inside this crate. They should go into the anvil, get repaired, and redistributed. Yep, essentially, that is the plan. Honestly, it does work fine. And it does take a very long time for them to lose any durability, so I have to do this, I don't know, every 10 hours or so? That's okay. So we are getting ores at a decent speed, now we need to process them. I was thinking that instead of going with mechanism, which is something that we always do, maybe this time we go with thermal expansion. Because I did notice that we are getting a ton of cinnabar, and if we use that inside an induction smelter, that is ore dabbling. You see, we got two and some byproducts. This time we got three. Oh wait a minute. Does it give you three every time? It gives you three every single time. That's or tripling <laughs> with a byproduct. I'll be very honest with you, I had no idea it's going to do that. I was going to go with induction smelters, but uh, this is amazing. Or tripling in like literally one block. It's just that we are going to get a crazy amount of cinnabar and rich slag. So we are going to have a drawer for it so that we can void the excess. So yes, you do get a crazy amount of rich slag, but you don't get that much cinnabar. So I had to input both of them inside the induction smelters, so that they always have a catalyst inside, and we will get bonuses. Also, induction smelters in 1.16 are kind of stupid, so whenever you have more than one chunk inside, it's not gonna work, it's gonna clog up the system, and everything will stop working. So basically what I had to do is that I am using Xnet in order to distribute the items and what I have done is that, well, we are inserting cinnabar and rich slag on a different channel, because they literally have one place to go and they're not going to clog up the system, but the ores are on a different channel and the maximum amount in the destination inventory is one. So at any given time, there should be just one ore inside the smelters. That's it. And yes, I did a very garbage job of covering it. I will fix it later on. Anyways, we are producing resources, we are processing those resources, and now we get to the most important part, a power. This guy generates 26,000 RF per tick, and that's it. <laughs> we need better reactors. And I think now that we have refined storage, we should be able to automate this guy. Uh, let me check. I believe that the orb itself is going to emit a redstone signal, and we can read it using a comparator whenever it has the crafting ingredients. That's not good. Yeah, that's not very good. <laughs> so when you have two, is it going to be off? No. You know, I was kind of hoping it's going to be a little bit smarter, because this is not very good. So how do people automate it? I don't know. I have actually seen it being automated a while ago, so let us just try. We need to have a crafter on top, so this should work. Yes. And the crafter from refined storage has a redstone mode. Okay, that's good. Uh, you should be able to read the comparator signal behind the block. <laughs> let us test. No. Yes. So in theory, all I have to do is that I need to have a redstone transmitter over here, which as usual is facing the incorrect way. Now it's fine and we put the receiver over there. So if I put something inside here, there should be a redstone signal, goes to the crafter and unlocks it. That is all good to know. Let us see if it works. So I have a quantum entangle porter with power. Here is your pattern. And if I order energized steel, 10 of them, what will you do? Nothing. <laughs> uh, redstone signal unlocks auto crafting. Uh, the opposite? Yes, yes, it does work. 
we just need to extract it. Ladies and gentlemen, that was the most stupid automation I have ever done in my life. Super easy. Just to give you a very small perspective, we're doing this right in front of Cubby's room. I think how we are going to do this is that we are going to have a logistical sorter under the orb. And I think refined storage is smart enough, so we should be able to export the results into an ender chest. Which obviously goes inside our refined storage system. So in theory, if I order 10 of them, we should start crafting, that is good. And if I set a filter for this guy, that should still work. Okay. Uh-huh. Yeah, the question is, is the craft being completed? Yes, okay. It's smart enough. I just hate the fact that I have to see the cables. Uh, how do we cover it? Oh, and by the way, just before I forget, we are going to switch the crafter with an iron crafter, which has 27 slots. Because I did notice in the recipe of the energizing orb that we have like 7 pages of recipe. Most of them are going to be redundant, but I'm afraid it could be more than 9. So just to clarify, can I make some hardened energy cells? Uh, 10 of them? I'm missing lava. <laughs> Okay, we still have our lava pool, so we're good. Uh, so hardened, 10. A uh, lag spike. I hate lag spikes. Crafter is locked. Oh, that's interesting. Another interesting fact is that I already had the ingots. We didn't have to craft it. But it's a nice test. Also, you, my dear friend, are going to drive me mad. Shutting up is a good idea. So the maximum input and output of a nitro energizing rod is going to be 3000 RF and a hardened energy cell will do 8000. A basic one is not going to be enough because that's like 2500 and this is why we're going with the hardened ones. They look nice. Are we out of power? What happened? I do have power. So why did you stop? Ah. Okay, we kind of need to configure them, otherwise they're just going to send power between themselves. So you receive from the south, you export from the north. Both of them are fine. So one of my main concerns as usual is that I need to hide everything so that the cabling is not visible. I think we should be able to do something like this. This is the ground floor of our home and we do have some cabling from refined storage up here. So the roof has to be trap doors. Otherwise it's going to be too short. Uh, what we can do is that we can put some of these and I don't know, cover it with spruce. It looks fine. And in any case, I'm not very picky. It's hidden, right? Maybe we can also do the same thing for the bottom so that we don't see the logistical sorter. And if I cover you, you should be blocked. Perfect. I can put the cabling behind the wall and use hardened energy cells. And we just put the rods on top. That's good. And now the only thing that we have to do is that we have to make the other patterns. Then we're good. I hate you. Where are you? I swear there is a wandering crater. Ah, there you are. What do you sell? Garbage. Well, I do say we are almost done, it's just that we don't have enough blaze rods or wither skeleton skulls. Uh, that looks nice. What is this? Lattice. Is it for a roof? <laughs> yeah, I can't put it vertically. Oh, you can. That does look nice. That also looks nice. And kind of weird. Anyways, that is not very important. The important thing is, we need skulls, we need rods. And I forgot where is my portal. You're my portal? Yes. We should also take some of this brimstone. It makes lime fire. Hello. What are you? Well, whatever it was, it is dead. I do have Warpal on the sword, so getting some skulls is not going to take that long. I did manage to gather some resources, but then I was paying attention to some of the quests. Uh, we do get some rods. I'm not gonna say no to rods. Uh, we also get power loot box. What does it give me? I have no idea what it gave me. Maybe some dry ice? It's okay, the most important thing are the rods. Oh, they are fast. Really fast. I want to make a nitro reactor and we are missing a few nether stars. This is why I had to go and gather some wither skeleton skulls. And since I'm really lazy to do this one by one, uh, can we have four of them? I shouldn't die. That is the hope. Do you know why? We have Oreos. Okay, one down. Two down. One more to go. Yep, that will work. It's just that I'm not really sure. Eight stars is going to be enough? Maybe not. Yeah, as it turns out, 8 nether stars is nowhere near enough. You need 9 nether stars just to make a reactor, and I also need some bits and pieces. And by bits and pieces, I basically mean more rods. Uh, you're 89% done. Because, you know, if I don't upgrade my rods, we're going to stay here for the next 12 hours. Almost done. 99. 100. Perfect. 
And if I remember correctly, you're also going to give me a loot box? Maybe? Hardened energy cables. That's garbage. And just to make sure I'm not going to recycle it, there you go. Uh, so just out of curiosity, can you make me like six of these rods? Well, you can. It's just going to take a bajillion years. It's okay. We will install rods as we go. But that is super fast. This guy single-handedly does better than the rest combined. So let me gather more nether stars and I'll be right back. So I have been working on power and yes, we do have extra rods and that is perfect because it's now super fast. Yeah, super fast in comparison, not in general. What was that explosion? Somebody blew up. I don't know, I just heard an explosion. It's okay. Anyways, I was going to say that I have been working on power and then I remembered something. We have been having Dr. Rage's head on the door for a very long time. I am very sorry, Dr. Rage. That was not the plan. I made you a tribute with Lime Fire, your favorite color. And hopefully nice armor? Maybe? Yeah, it does look fine. Uh, your extra. Yes, much better. For running the reactor, we do need some ice. Uh, we do not have any production of ice, so we need to harvest it manually. I was thinking maybe we can get some silk touch? Yes, silky. Silky cloth, rose gold. Ah, gold and copper. Can I cheat and do it in an induction smelter? Okay, perfect. It took me 10 minutes to figure out which machine I should use. It's the anvil. Hello, Dr. Rage. You know, making ice is not that difficult. I'm just being lazy. Oh, it's over there. Um, that's it? Ah, no, there's a bigger one over there. Okay, yes. Blue ice. I don't need a crazy amount. I have been here. <laughs> I just need to run the reactor for a few hours. Then we will automate the ice. And instead of losing three levels every single time, maybe we should make a teleporter. No, it's not called the teleporter. It's called porter. Okay. I didn't make it because I wasn't sure I'm going to get into power. But now that we are into power and we are going to get a wireless charger, why the hell not? We just need to bind it to you and charge it up. Oh, you're slow. <laughs> Very slow. <laughs> but do you work? Yes. Perfection. Oh, you're done. My reactor is ready. Oh, yes. The first one is ready. So you, my dear friend, you are garbage. I should not have done that because now we don't have any power. Well, you do have a buffer, right? Yes, 100 million. Obviously, it is not working at maximum efficiency, but it is generating us almost 100,000 RF per tick. We need a few of them. Just to give you a small update, it has been a few hours since I have installed these guys and this is the durability lost, 160. It's nothing. This can run for, I don't know, maybe 20 hours. Obviously, before I have to repair it, it's going to last for a very long time. And we are also getting a steady supply of ores, it's just that uranium is kind of garbage. Because uranium in the induction smelter itself only gives you like one or two ingots, that's it. And that's not a very good yield. Maybe we have to do ore quintupling or something. Or maybe even blood magic, that's also ore quintupling. We will see, because at the end of the day, I don't mind getting a little bit of polonium. But with that, ladies and gentlemen, I think it's also a good time to wrap up the episode. I still have to remember where half my base is, because it has been a long time. Anyways, thank you so much for watching, and I hope you enjoyed it. Till the next one, bye bye.